Tonight on The Roast, the Coalition announces its alternative to the national broadband network and an American baseball mascot is photographed with an offensive sign about Steve Irwin. Cripes! No, wait, what did he say? Cri crikey! Jeez, it's been a while. So the coalition today announced its long-awaited broadband policy, whilst claiming Labor's plan could more than double in cost to an estimated $90 billion by the time it's finished. Now, according to The Australian, the coalition promises a rollout of the NBN that will be earlier, yes, cheaper, come on, and slower. What? I want my super fast internet now, and I want to pay as little as possible for it, but I also want that super fast internet to be super fast. Either way, I'll still have to wait because the NBN is far behind schedule, with more than 100,000 fewer homes to be connected than originally forecast this year. For more, we now cross to Seton K. Smith, who's been travelling the nation with the construction workers currently building the NBN. Seton, what's the major difference between these two plans? Tom, under Labor's rollout, houses will be linked to the internet via a fibre to the premises approach whereas the Coalition's plan is for it to be fibre to the node. Right, well that's great news for anyone currently living in a node. But which plan do construction workers prefer? Workers prefer the Coalition plan, Tom, because then they won't have to go door to door explaining what they're doing. Sure, that means they'll miss out on the various sexual rewards offered to them by internet-starved nerds, but at least they won't have to spend their afternoons explaining gigabytes to Jane, the pension who's already in a bad mood because Margaret Thatcher died. Yeah, right, so, so worker morale's pretty low out there. Tom, how would you feel if you spent your whole day just laying a cable so people can access their foot porn faster? OK, well, at least both major parties agree that super-fast broadband is necessary for, well, Australia's future. I don't think it's necessary. I say we just wait for New Zealand to get fast Wi-Fi, then we can sit outside their border and try to figure out the password. My guess is password one. Oh, jeez, I hope not, because that's my password. So the MBN, which will be rolled out hopefully by the end of 2025, promises to drive productivity improvements. And with internet speeds pushing 100 megabits per second, we'll be able to download entire films like that, which would free up so much time. And just imagine what I could do with that time. Done. Finally, I can start on my masterpiece. But first, sexy feet. <laughs> yeah, I do love feet. So basically, all of Australia will have super-fast, world-beating internet in around about 12 years' time, assuming the rest of the world doesn't upgrade its internet in, you know, the next 12 years. Countries like South Korea, currently home to the world's fastest internet. And Jazz Twemlow joins us now live from Seoul via Skype. Jazz, can Loud you... Loud and clear, Tom. Well, I didn't even finish you my You don't need to finish your question, Tom. I hear it before you say it. The internet here is that good. And to go ahead and answer your next three questions, yes, I had a good flight, no, the Thatcher memes still haven't stopped, and yes, South Korea still exists. Wow, so, so I take it the internet there is way better than here? Yes, Tom, in the time I've been talking to you, I've already torrented all the television. Jesus, so where does Australia rank in terms of world internet speeds? You're ranked 40th, Tom. You're like a third world internet country. In in fact, I'm currently trying to get Koreans to sponsor Australian kids. Just look at this poor teenager. Little Evan here can only gain access to 10 seconds of grainy, hardcore footage every minute. Just tragic, Tom. Yeah, I'm going to have to take your word for it, Jazz. I'm still waiting for the photo to download at this end. Oh, to think, Tom, with more help, Little Evan could gain enough internet to die playing StarCraft. Furthermore, it goes without saying the Prime Minister of South Korea consumes the life of children. Sorry, Jazz, I think you were breaking up there a bit. It needs to buffer. Buffer? Buffer. Ah, yes. Korean ancients once spoke of such things. God, that must be frustrating. It's time to show you what Korean internet is really capable of. Watch this. Oh, God, Jazz, what's oh. happening? <sighs> Sorry, Tom, just checking my emails really quickly. Oh, I want that. We turn now to a story making world news on both the super-fast internet abroad and more slowly on our crappy version. Florida-based baseball team, the Tampa Bay Stingrays, have come under fire after their mascot, Raymond the Stingray, was photographed with an offensive sign that made fun of Steve Irwin's death. And I'm offended too. I mean, how is that a Stingray? Stingrays aren't hairy, they're rubbery, wet discs. Finally, someone's cracking down on unrealistic mascots. Hmm? Oh yeah, the sign too, that, that is offensive. 
But according to the teleprompter that I'm just reading now, Raymond the Hairy Stingray is not the only one to blame as he didn't author the sign, he was just photographed with it. The sign was in fact made by Army veteran Lloyd Johnson, who we couldn't find a photo of. Now Mr Johnson was proudly unapologetic, saying, I love Steve Irwin, but come on, it's funny. No it's not Lloyd, making fun of dead people's never funny. Well unless they've been dead for ages, like Grandma. <laughs> Suck it Grandma. Clark Richards is at Tropicana Field in Florida. Clark, what's the club doing to reprimand Raymond the Hairy Stingray? Tom, the club has given Ray a stern talking to. Mmm, how did he take it? Well, there was a lot of this. Okay. And then a bit of this. Yeah. And finally ten minutes of this. What's that, Gangnam Style? He's an entertainer, Tom. He can't turn it off. Okay, and as a result, has Tropicana Field made changes to its ground security? Oh yeah. Now Raymond the Stingray can't do half the things he used to do. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Clark, but a baseball mascot really only does two things. He dances and he holds signs. That's right, Tom. Without posing for pitches with signage, all he's got left is dancing. Raymond can't dance for nine innings straight. Stingrays don't even have legs. Oh, I'm well aware of the factual inaccuracies with this mascot. But has it affected other mascots as well? Oh, Tom, the mascots' unions have been up in large foam arms. They tried to pick it outside the stadium, but they weren't allowed to hold signs. No one knows what they want. Do these guys ever get out of costume? Costumes, Tom? Well, speaking of costumes, we of course have our own mascot here at the Roast. So from a mascot's perspective, give it up for Roasty. Good to see you, Roasty. <laughs> <laughs> Just terrific. Now, Roasty, where did this mascot go wrong? Oh, I always forget about mascots and their vow of silence. Mark Humphreys, you speak mascot. Could you jump in there and translate for me? I can't hear you. Can you jump in and translate? All right, I heard you. Now, Roasty, why would Raymond the Hairy Stingray pick up such an offensive sign? Uh, Roasty blames jealousy. You see, sign maker Lloyd said every time he stood up, he was stopped to take a picture with someone. Meanwhile, Ray's out there doing the nut bush and no one's watching. You can't blame Ray for wanting a photo with the sign. The sign was getting all the attention. So, Roasty, you're saying that it's acceptable for mascots to pose with offensive signs? Mm. See, Tom, chances are that Ray couldn't even read the sign. You can't see shit in those headpieces, those microscopic eye holes. They're usually in the mouth or the neck. You ever tried reading through a neck? Yeah, but still, surely there needs to be greater effort on the part of the mascots. Oh, you, Tom. Hey, did Roasty just say that? Yep. Well, if the mascot pleads ignorance, who do we blame when something offends us? We cross now to Nick Richardson, who's outside Tropicana Field. Nick, do these joke sign writers need to take responsibility for the things they say at sporting events? Oh, Tom, you can say whatever you like at a sporting event. Die, Glasson, you f***ing asshole. You worthless piece of s***. I can rip your f***ing throat out and eat your f***ing heart. You're the worst f***ing host I've ever seen. We're still talking about baseball, right? Yeah, sure we are. But these fans are passionate and they need to express that. At least Steve Owen is being remembered. The only sign I'll end up on is the one I wrap my car around. But Nick, according to the Tampa Bay Stingrays, fans are welcome to bring signs into Tropicana Field, provided they're not offensive. As a war veteran, surely Lloyd Johnson would be the last person to joke about death. Now, the Tampa Bay Stingrays, Tom, what else would he put on their to-do list? Photobomb swimmers? Have a flat face? The Stingrays' one claim to fame is killing a Queenslander. Now I take it Lloyd Johnson's going to be banned from Tropicana Stadium. Even if he was, it wouldn't matter to him. He's not so much a baseball fan as he is a fan of designing hateful posters. Lloyd stated in an interview that he previously created a sign for a Denver Broncos game that substituted Irwin's name with Christopher Reeves. Ah, oh, so this guy's just a dick. Yeah, he's just a dick. Right, Roasty, it's fine. This guy's just a dick. <laughs> I love this guy. Good night.